Here we go into logarithm derivatives. Oh my goodness. So this is going to be a lot like the natural log. We're going to go over the formula first, then I'm going to go over why the formula works, like where it comes from. So if you've got log base ax, that's the same as doing 1 over x ln a. If you've got a u function, so like a function within a function, you've got a little chain rule, that's going to be 1 over u ln of a times u prime. And you might be like, wait a second, that's a lot like the ln. It is. In fact, if e was our base, right? So if we had a very specific form of this, log base e to the u, that's the same as ln of e. That would be 1 over u times u prime. And if we use this formula, we'd have the ln of e down there. But the ln of e is 1. So you end up with 1 over u times u prime. And that should have been a u prime there. The point being is, if you have base e, we end up with still the same formula. So these formulas, they're not new. They're more general than what we're used to. So why did we go more specific first with e to the x and with natural log? It's simple. E, base e, is used a lot more in math than a lot of the other bases. And it's very handy in population measure. It's handy in a lot of things. So we use those a lot, and that's why we teach them specifically first. But backing up, this is the general formula. So it's 1 over stuff, d stuff, but you got the ln of whatever the base is down there. So memorize it, but notice the relationship with what you've already learned to make those connections. Now, I will show you at the end of this video why this formula works that way, like where it comes from. But let's use it first. So let's find the derivative of each. f prime of x is equal to, well, you got log base 2 of x. That's going to be 1 over x, just like the natural log, times the derivative of x is 1. Don't forget about your ln of 2 in the basement down there. That's it. Done. This one right here, it's base 10 technically. So that's important. y prime is going to be 1 over x squared plus 5. 1 over stuff, d stuff. And now don't forget about the fact that that needs to be multiplied by the ln of a. All right, so we'll neaten that up a little bit. That'll be 2x all over ln of 10, I'll put on the outside, times x squared plus 5. To be sure, ln of 10 is its own number, and then it's being multiplied by x squared plus 5. This is not in the logarithm. Very important. Okay, now I included this one because I want to remind you that we should use expansion rules where possible. We couldn't do that here or here, but here we can. So we've got multiplication, and then we've got 9 minus x to the 1 half is how we can rewrite that. So we're going to use our log rules to expand and make life easier. So this is log of x plus log of 9 minus x to the 1 half. Okay, so we have that. Next, y equals log x plus 1 half can come out front, and you've got log of 9 minus x. We haven't taken a derivative yet. Make no mistake about it. And now we're going to do that. We'll do dy dx. Well, now we go through and we take a much easier derivative than that would have been. Some product and chain rule nastiness we avoided. Thanks to logarithms. Thanks, logs. So now we're going to go with 1 over stuff. d stuff is just 1. Don't forget about ln of 10. That ln of 10 is because, remember, the base is 10 in each of these because it's a common log. If there's no number and it's log, we assume that it's 10. All right, that's known the universe around. Plus we have 1 half times 1 over stuff. That's 1 over 9 minus x times the derivative of 9 minus x is negative 1 times, and that'll be ln 10. And we'll neaten this up a little bit. So it's 1 over x ln 10. And then we've got minus 1 over, I'll put the 2 ln 10 out front, 2 ln 10 times 9 minus x. And that's all. All right, so those are the processes. It's a lot like the natural log. That's what you need to know. Now, why does the formula work? Okay, well, to show that, I'm actually going to rewrite this in, well, exponential form. So y equals log a to the u is true if and only if a to the u, or a to the y is equal to u. That's using the definition of a logarithm. Now, from here, what I'm going to do, believe it or not, is take the ln of both sides. And when I do that, the y will jump out front, right? So if I take the ln of both sides like so, the y jumps out front. From here, what I need to do is I'm going to first separate the ln a from the y because I want to know the derivative. So that's going to be y equals ln of u all over ln of a. Essentially, all we just did is the change of base formula. Those of you that are change of base of files. Now we're going to take a derivative. Now, y prime is equal to ln a is a constant. So you could look at this as like 1 over ln a times ln u. 
That is a constant, as weird as it looks, because A is a constant. So no product rule, no quotient rule. So we get 1 over ln A is just chilling out times. What's the derivative of ln of U? 1 over U times U prime, or 1 over stuff D stuff. And when we put all that together, you've got 1 over U ln A times U prime, or U prime over all of that, which is our formula. That's where it comes from. We are going to go into integration in a little bit with this stuff, but just before that, we're going to go over how logarithmic differentiation is still needed with functions where the bases are variables. See you in that quick video in a second. Peace.